Welcome to Sertigen Bosch and the 2019 World Archery Para Championships. Our backdrop is one of the most historic buildings in the Netherlands as we prepare to add to the archery history books, crowning two more world champions on Recurve Sunday. The conditions are absolutely superb for some high scoring archery. I'm Karen Bashir and joining me is Chris Wells as we take a look at the schedule coming up. I see recurve individual finals this afternoon. Satogan Bosch featuring some really excellent archers like Paralympic champion Zara Namati and Eric Bennett, who we've already seen take team gold here at the World Championships. Yeah, so we start with the women's individual matches. Coming up now. It's the bronze medal match in the recurve women's open individual on the 70 meter range where we'll see Russia's Svetlana Barantseva take on Iran's Zara Namati. Well, these two came through the ranking round first and second, a 625 for Barantseva, a 623 for Namati. Baratseva beat Senyal of Turkey before losing to Wu of China. Namati beat Florano of Italy before going out to the Polish archer Olaf Szczaja. So the losing semi-finalists to face each other for bronze. Let's go down to the field of play and welcome them out. Please. Please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the Recurve Women Open bronze medal match. So the 41-year-old world number three Svetlana Barantseva of Russia leads out ahead of the world number one Zara Namati of Iran who is 34 years old. The world number one and the world number three sounds like a lineup for the gold medal, Chris. Well, Zara Namati has been a little disappointing here uh, in Stogenbosch. She's the two-time Paralympic champion. She won in London and in Rio in 2016. And is a two-time world champion as well. Uh, Baron Saver, though, we've already seen her shoot in this arena. She's shot very impressively so far. Zara Namati! There is the double Paralympic champion. And the world number one. The line judge for this match, Mr. Roy Cortez. The line judge uh, preparing the athletes. The range is ready, the target is ready. The countdown clock is on for Svetlana Barantseva on target one, so she will get proceedings underway here in Den Bosch. And Chris, the weather is very good. The wind has, well, it's not appeared like it did yesterday. High scores on the cards? Well, it's been changeable over the weekend and throughout the weekend. So Token Bosch, we've had rain, we've had wind, really, really strong wind later at night. And the, the compound finals and the W1 finals were quite overcast, but today's conditions have been excellent. The trees haven't been moving at all. And, and if these ladies shoot to their potential, we'll, we'll have some, some excellent set scores. So Barrett Saver on the left to get us underway. Seven. The sight out high and left for the Russian. The Matty's first arrow. Six. High and right. And that is Namati's first shot in this arena. Since familiarization on Friday when archers had a chance to familiarize themselves with the surroundings as there is no 70 meter practice range next to this Eight. finals stage yeah just three arrows per set so uh, they rock on through these individual matches pretty quickly yeah and what's Six. interesting is that these power archers even get an additional 10 seconds 30 seconds per arrow and they're not using that time at all so Barantseva can put the first set out of reach from Iran's Namati. Nine. And she gets closer to the center of the target and she takes the first two set points. Namati will be looking to zone in on that gold target area. Seven. 
Yeah, individual matches are sets of three arrows. Highest set score wins two set points. If it's a tie, then each archer wins one set point. First to six set points takes the match. Well, there seems to be uh, a bit of banter, let's call it, going on between Baron Saver and her coach. We saw in the mixed team final where Russia took gold. The coach was very vocal with both uh, Svetlana Baron Saver and her and her partner Beto Zendoziev. That's continued here in this individual bronze medal match. Yeah, so five sets in total. But of course, uh, this can be done very quickly indeed. Uh, it's a great start. And the grouping from Baron Saver was very good. Just uh, all a little high and a little to the left. So quite consistent. If she can just change her aim a little bit or her sight, she might come down into the nines and tens. Well, we've had this time and time again. The first set a little bit lower and then they settle down. And this crowd is the biggest it's been all day and that will add a little something extra to those archers on the line. Namati trailing will shoot first in the second set. Nine. Well, she's adjusted there and hit the yellow for the first time. Nine. Well, that could be a telling arrow as Baron Saver adjusted her sights. Ten! Zara Namati, you know, she has the experience. She famously shot in both the Paralympic and Olympic Games at Rio 2016. She's no stranger to these big stages. Nine! It looks like Baron Saver has adjusted things. But Namati can put this out of reach. Ten. And she has a 29 out of a maximum 30 is a very good shooting. Nine. So all square after two sets. Uh, both the athletes have won one set apiece. So two set points each between Baron Saver and the Matty. Well, Baron Saver, very, very good greeting, but Namati shot two tens. There's the first one, and the second one almost in the same hole. Yeah, the first shot looks a lot stronger than the second, but they landed in the same place, and that, that's the kind of level we expect to see from someone with as much experience as Zara Namati. Yeah, you've, you've said before that uh, these power archers don't perhaps have the extensive circuit uh, that we see for the able-bodied archers, uh, so that experience could play its part here. Oh yeah, Zara Namati is not just uh, the best archer on Iran's para recurve team, she's the best archer on Iran's able-bodied recurve team as well. So, Brown Saver will do the honours at the start of the third set. No. Eight. Seven, eight, liner. Svetlana Barrett saves first arrow to the right in this match. Ten. Zara just swinging her bow a little bit to the left. I mean, it, it's a big movement in the bow, with a little movement at the point of execution that just helped guide that into the middle. Nine. 
So opportunity for Namati here to steal the point. Seven. Well, she's put it in the seven to level things up. So provisionally the set points in the third set are shared between the two athletes but as you can see there's an asterisk against the second arrow the seven for baron saver that will go to a measure uh, namati grimaced a little bit as she let that last arrow go she's been in situations like this before and she's shot she shot good arrows that one wasn't a particularly good arrow Well, get a good view of the judges at each end and uh, the Russian coach there in discussion with Baron Saver. And it has been confirmed that that seven has gone up to an eight and Baron Saver gets the third set and the two points with it. She goes four, two up in this bronze medal match. Zara Namati, the Iranian, training by two, will start things off in the fourth set of this bronze medal match. Eight. It's the second time Namati has swung her bow a little bit to the left to try and edge that arrow as it leaves the bow and, and swing it to the left a little bit in the target. Nine. Nine. So Zara Namati needs a really good arrow to put the pressure on Baron Saver. Eight. And that one's gone off into the eight. This could be it. An eight will take the bronze medal in the women's open individual. Nine. And she scores a nine. Uh, uh, quite strange up and down match for the Russian, but she's done enough in the end to take the set points and she wins the bronze medal 6 2. Zara Namati, not the best we've seen that Paralympic champion in the finals arena, so Svetlana Baron Seva thoroughly deserved to win that consistent shooting. Didn't shoot a single 10 in that match but kept most things in and around the nine, and that, and that was what made the difference. Well, you can smile, Svetlana Baron Saver. You've just taken bronze at the World Championships. And we know that all the archers are uh, perfectionists. A handshake between the two and the Russian athlete handing over a little gift there. A little memento. It's a, a tradition in archery to, to hand over gifts. It's very prevalent in our archery weather. The atmosphere is often quite relaxed and friendly. Yeah, great deal of respect between the athletes as we get a nice view of that beautiful cathedral. St. John's, or St. Jan's as it's known here. It took 110 years to build that uh, cathedral, completed in 1330, I believe. Well, the packed out crowd here in Den Bosch are ready, and so are we. It's time for the gold medal match and time for us to crown the 2019 world champion. 
China's Wu Chunyan, 29 years old, takes on the Polish athlete Milena Olszewska. And here's the route through to the final. Wu beating Barrett Saver. Olszewska beating Namati in the semi-finals. So this for the gold medal. World number 13, Wu, takes on the world number two, Olszewska. Let's go down to the range. Oh, here we are. And welcome the athletes out on to the shooting line. And gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the recurve women open gold medal match. Well, Chris, we've talked about uh, the differences in the impairments, and uh, we're going to see it here. Uh, the Chinese athlete uh, in a wheelchair, and uh, the Polish athlete using a stool. Yeah, Milena doesn't use a wheelchair. She she uh, uses crutches to get around. So she chooses to shoot from a from a, a seated position, which is perfectly acceptable. Wu Chunyan from China. I don't believe. She has control of her legs or her lower core, so she shoots and moves yeah, around in a wheelchair. Well, if we go by world ranking, Olszewska here is the world number two up against Wu, who's the world number 13. But actually, it's the Chinese athlete who shot better here, a 619 in the ranking round versus a 613 for Olszewska. Yeah, and Wu Chunyan really is one of the best power archers over there. Over the last five or so years, she won the World Championships in 2015 when Zara Namati wasn't there. And then she was completely unbeaten in international competition until the Rio 2016 Olympic, uh, Paralympic final where she, where she lost her Namati. Um, with Namati, we just saw, she lost the bronze medal match. It's, it's Wu's chance to claim back that world title from 2015. Eight. So Wu gets us underway with a high eight and makes a quick adjustment to her equipment. Eight. Matched by Olszewska. And Milena really has had good success on the European circuit and here she shot very well as well. Nine. Nine. Taking a little bit more time to set the second arrow up. Seven. Eight. Elena, Rio individual bronze medalist. London 2012 individual bronze medalist at the last two Paralympic Games, also Nine. got a good record. But uh, she's lost out in the first set to Wu Chunyan, who takes it 25 to 24. Not setting the world alight in terms of the score just yet, but as you said, Chris, the first set or the first end, as we saw yesterday, have been uh, sort of like, almost like sighters uh, as a set. Yeah, sighters that score. Um, obviously, they don't have that 70 meter practice range that we that we usually have besides the major finals, due to the fact that we're right in the middle of the city centre, and, and it's also set up for the jazz festival that's been running this weekend. They've only got an eight meter warm up range before they enter enter this arena to shoot their finals match. So the first points for Wu in this gold medal match. And Wu Chunyan's technique really is quite textbook. Milena will start us off in this set. Eight. 
nine. Well, just going one better, the Chinese athlete, the individual bronze medalist last time around in Beijing. She got the hat trick in uh, 2015, team individual and mixed team gold medals, the Chinese athlete. Nine. Seven. Both low and left. A ten will put this one out of reach and draw Olszewska level on points. Five. Well, that is a weird one. Uh, she, she tried to put her, her bow arm up. Just as she let go, she knew it was low. Nine. Well, when there was an opportunity to seal the points, Olszewska dropped an arrow into the five, and Wu Chen Yan is just two set points away from a world title here in 2019. Sheska, well, can you explain how she dropped that one? You said you saw her lifting her bow to try and lift it up. When you've been shooting for a long time, you understand how your arrow is going to land but as you let go. You, you, can, you know if you're aiming in the right place. You know if you've done something not quite right. And, and she felt that that was low, whether she was aiming low or she just didn't have the strength that she executed. And, and you could see her front hand just, just jerk upwards a little bit in an effort to, to correct subconsciously. Well, she's trailing by four set points here, Milena Olszewska. We go into the third set, and the Polish archer will shoot first. An opportunity to put down a big score to put her opponent under pressure. Eight. Hasn't had an arrow high yet, Milena. Nine. Wu Chunyan looking very strong here. Just watch this setup from Olszewska. That looked Seven. a little better. It looked a little bit more stable, less movement. I think she needs to move her sight. She's landing low, but it might be too late. Well, that seven will be measured. Seven. Matched by a seven from Wu Chen Yan. Olszewska needs a strong arrow here. Nine. And it does go a little higher and up into the nine, but a ten here will do it. Eight. She puts it into the eight, so a level on scores. And the reason she needed the ten is because that seven, the second arrow from Olszewska, could well be marked up to an eight. If it is, then the pole will get the points. As things stand, they share the points in this set. Well, we get to the confirmation. The score remains the same. Olszewska would have been praying for that seven to be marked up to an eight, but that's not to be. She does get off the scoreboard with a single point, but Wu Chun Yan is one point away from the world title here in Den Bosch. Yeah, she only needs to tie this set with Milena, this set or the set afterwards, to take the gold medal. Well, she's four points down, Milena Olszewska. So she'll shoot first in the fourth set. This to stay in the gold medal match at the World Championships. Seven. 
again, she didn't look happy with that one. You can tell where the arrow is going to land by, by how her front arm moves. As soon as she lets go, she, she jumps it in a direction, and that's the opposite no. direction to where it's going to hit the target. Pressure on now. Hey. And she's moved that one closer to the gold. That was a good shot as well. Six. Well, just when you thought she was going to run away with it, the score's all level. Can Olszewska move this one further to the right and put it into the ten ring? Well, it has moved across to the right, but it's low, so still an opportunity for the win here. Just an eight needed to draw level and win. share the set points for victory. Eight points. And it is an eight. She does draw level, pulls that one left, but Wu Chun Yan has won back the World Championship title that she oh, took in 2015. She is the 2019 world champion here in the Netherlands. Yeah, fantastic result for Wu Chen Yan, her second world title after 2015 in Donau Eschingen. Looking back, that one was a, was a better final. She shot a better final, but it doesn't matter. This one's still a gold medal. Uh, lots of her teammates up in the, the stands cheering her on. Wu Chun Yan will be on top of the podium a little bit later on here in Den Bosch. going off the field of play as we look down at this beautiful 70 meter range and what a backdrop that, that is so the women's individual is over Wu Chun Yan top of the table and the world champion Milena Olszewska from Poland taking silver Svetlana Brantseva winning bronze in a strange battle with the double Paralympic champion Zara Namati. Yeah, and all of those archers in that list will have won places to the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games, shaping up to be quite an event next summer. Well, they'll feel that they helped Wu to that gold medal. little past half past one here in the Netherlands coming up are the men's bronze and gold medal matches so we get a view behind the scenes You can see, uh, you mentioned, Chris, the uh, jazz festival on. There's actually music here after the event every evening in that stage on the right-hand side of the range. Yeah, and all across the Togenbosch, the city, it's, it's, a, it's a coincidence these events are being held at the same time, but it's a fantastic mix of sport and art and culture, and, and it's a really great thing to be using the venue for both. There we go, closer look at that stage. Well, they'll be pumping out the tunes a little later on the jazz tunes pump i've heard a couple of uh, fairly pumping jazz tunes whilst i've been here in den Bosch, and that crowd will probably hang around to hear some of the early music before venturing into the town a little bit later on on a beautiful sunny afternoon that's the umbrellas up to protect that 
that young man from the Sun. It's been packed out here throughout the day. Uh, the sunny weather has helped. Um, we thought it was going to bring us some uh, high shooting, but it's actually uh, created more and more tension throughout the day uh, as the archers, uh, uh, well, they're not used to these conditions. No, I'm looking forward to hearing some feedback for some archers about, about the conditions in the arena because it's been interesting, interesting. Well, before we get back to more action, it's time to celebrate the women's medalists here. At the 2019 the victory Power World Championships. For the recurve Women Open. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes. Hier komt de medaille ceremonie voor de categorie recurve Dames Open. World Archery Vice President. De medailles zullen worden overhandigd door de vicevoorzitter van World Archery, Jörg Brokamp. The flowers will be presented. De bloemen zullen worden overhandigd door Her Royal Highness Princess Margriet. The gifts will be presented by Septo Homos Elderman. The cadeaus zullen worden overhandigd. Wethouder Sport namens de gemeente Septo Homos. Huid van Olden. Bronze medal representing the Russian Federation. Bronze medaille namens Rusland. Svetlana Marantieva. Well, we already here in Den Bosch, and we're going to see it again here. Svetlana Barantseva of Russia, the 41-year-old, has taken the bronze in the Women's Open individual at the World Championships. Medals presented by Jörg Brokamp, the uh, World Archery Vice President. And Her Royal Highness, Princess Marguerite of the Netherlands, presenting the gifts. A bunch of flowers presented from Her Royal Highness. Princess Marguerite, an honorary board member of the International Paralympic Committee, and a and a huge supporter of Paris Sports. Silver medal. Yeah, and the uh, waffles being presented by Den Bosch Alderman Hugh Lama's Van Alden as we Milena celebrate Ocepka. our silver medalist, the 35 year old Rio Paralympic and London Paralympic individual bronze medal has taken silver at the 2019 World Champions Championships. Milena Olszewska. Fantastic that the, the princess of the Dutch royal family here to present some of the gifts to these talented, talented archers in Sittogenbosch. She's yes. been watching the uh, watching the archery from the stand as well. It's a real honour, isn't it, for these archers to be presented uh, 
by a member of the Dutch royal family, the House of Orange Nassau. Gold medal and world But the biggest cheer of the lot the People's Republic of China. goes to this 29-year-old Chinese athlete. Wu Chunyan. Wu Chunyan is the 2019 world champion. Well, she's got her medal, Ladies she's got the World Championship title, her flowers able, and her waffles. And now it's time for the anthem of the People's Republic of China. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause to our athletes. Dames and heren, Sert Ogenbos, nog een groot applaus voor onze top drie atleten. Well, there we go. The medalist Wu Chinyan taking the world title. Milena Olszewska of Poland in the silver medal position and Svetlana Brantseva of Russia taking bronze and getting their opportunity to have a photo with Her Royal Highness Prince Marguerite of the Netherlands. Delighted Chinese cheerleading squad there in the crowd, part of the Chinese team, I'm sure. Celebrating Wu Chunyan, she took the, the title in 2015, had a sabbatical in 2017, and has picked it up again in 2019. Of course, the obligatory handshake with the mascot, Archie. But of course, all plaudits go to the 2019 world champion, Wu Chunyan. Milena Olszewska, the silver medalist, and Svetlana Marantseva in bronze. Let's make it three podium finishes and three world para championships for Wu Chun Yan. And, and of course, the silver medal at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. That's four major events and four podium finishes. What a fantastic record. Well, that's the women's medals all sorted. One more 
what matter to deal with in Den Bosch. Well, a great view down the 70 meter range as we get ready for the bronze medal match in the recurve men's open individual here in Den Bosch. Well, it's Abato Seizendor Zev of Russia up against Pur Ija Jalal Ipur of Iran. And here is how the athletes got through to this bronze medal match, losing in the semi-finals, have to dust themselves off, pick themselves up, and shoot off for a medal here at the World Championships. Well, you can throw the rankings, the world rankings, out the window here. Barto is the world number 31. Jalal Ipur is the world number 21, but they're shooting off for bronze, and here they come. Please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the recurve man open bronze medal match. Well, there is the 25 year old Russian Barto Tse Dendor Ziev. Shot a 6.49 in the ranking round. Came through elimination as the fourth rank archer. Beat Zha of China 6 0 in the quarterfinals before losing to Salva Thambi of Malaysia in the semis. He goes up against the 30 year old Iranian athlete. And there is that world ranking for the Russian. 31, but that doesn't tell the full story. Here's Purija Jalal Ipur of Iran. He shot a 658 in the ranking round to be ranked second. Uh, beat Ozan of Turkey in the quarterfinals 6 4 before losing to Bennett of the USA in the semi finals. His world ranking of 21 also doesn't tell the full story. No, basically it's Zendorziev, um, and up until this event he held the world record for the 70 meter qualification round at 655 points. That was that was beaten by Kim Min Su when he got the top seed here with 662, but Kim lost out earlier in the eliminations and it's Beto here shooting for bronze. Yeah, but it's Jalal Ipur of Iran to get us underway. Hey. Saita is a left eight. eight. The Russian making an adjustment immediately. Three arrows per set. Seven. Ten. And our first ten of this bronze medal match. opportunity here for the Russian oh. Very quick action and a 27 out of 30 is a good score and it beats the 24 set by Jalalipur and he gets the first two set points Chris I just noticed the Iranian athlete is it seems to be really tensing through the draw yeah and his um his draw length also seems to be a bit short he, he's um his clicker that's the, the piece of metal that sits on top of the arrow where the arrow passes underneath and you can see moving clicking just at the, the top of the the shot before they execute that tells them that they're drawing the same length each time 
He doesn't seem to be fully extending, but there is a lot of tension in his extension because it's going quite quickly and quite early. But it's working for him. He, he was the second seed at this event. Uh, they're clearing the targets of the arrows down at the other end of the range as the athletes look on. Moments uh, to uh, think about what to do, what to correct, what to do better as both athlete, athletes seek perfection. Jalal Ipoh trailing will start the second set. Eight. Nine, ten, later. Beto really looks determined, absolutely determined. Same look on his face when he shot the ten at the end of the last set. Nine. A good view of the flight of that arrow, but uh, all square after two. Seven. Another opportunity for the Russian here. And that was all that was required. Uh, 25, not quite uh, the uh, pace he set in the first set where he scored 27, but it was enough to beat the second 24 from Jalalipur. There's quite a comparison between the two archers' technique in this bronze medal match. Beto is, is very high over his shot. His shoulders are high and his, and his hand in the bow is quite high as well. And that will mean... He, when he's tensing up and he's forcing that arrow down down the range if anything goes goes too much he'll force the arrows down in the target whereas Poria is kind of very subtle the shoulders are very low and he's almost below the arrows below the shot and you saw his arrows go high under the tension it could be that it could be another factor but it's it's a good comparison between the style of shooting well, you mentioned he looked determined Good close up of both the athletes' faces. He looks very, very calm, Jolly Poor, by contrast. He's got a very soft touch on his equipment. Hey. Not particularly explosive, whereas Beto is firm, it's bold. Ten. And it's working for him at the moment. His second ten of the match. Nine. Nine. Another solid shot here. Jalalipo needs a good arrow here to put some pressure on the Russian. Hey. Well, Beto say Denzor Ziev could do it here and take the bronze medal with a seven. Didn't look happy. Seven. But it is a seven. That's all he needed. And we've seen that so often with the final yeah, arrow needing a lower score than they've shot throughout. And they just about scrape over the line. It's Beto. Say Denzor Ziev of Russia who takes the bronze medal here in Den Bosch.
Well, that last arrow went wayward because he'd sacrificed his technique long before. He, he was just willing those arrows into the tent. There was, there was no thought of finesse. He was determined to win that match, and, and he's done so. Well, he didn't look happy with that last arrow, but uh, he's done it. He's taken the bronze here at the World Championships. And as always, the mutual respect between the athletes. Faria Jalalipur of Iran will be fourth in the record books, but it's Beto Tidenzor Ziev of Russia who's going to be on the podium. And it was a beautiful 10 to start things off in that final set needed a seven to win look at the face not happy but it just stays in the seven to take the bronze medal well it may not be as high scoring as we were expecting but it's certainly been entertaining for this crowd here One more match to go at the World Archery Para Championships, and it's the gold medal match in the recurve men's individual. And we're going to see Malaysia's Suresh Salvatambi, 25 years old, taking on the USA's Eric Bennett. And here's their route through. Salva Thambi shot a 6.34 to be ranked ninth for the elimination stages. It was a 6.18 for Eric Bennett, down in a 22nd place in the rankings. But uh, Bennett beat Yuyama of uh, Japan and then Jalalipo of Iran to make the gold medal match. Salva Thambi took out Korea's Kim and then Russia's Say Dendor Ziev to make it through. So Salva Thambi takes on Bennett for gold here in Den Bosch. Let's go down to the range. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the recurve man open gold medal match. Well, shooting on target on one, the target world number, number 35, 25 years old, and from Malaysia, it's Suresh Selvatambi. Looking to secure Malaysia's second world champion title. Only previous one came back in 2009, also at the Para Championships. Well, he goes up against Eric Bennett of the USA. He's 45 years old. He's been on this range already today, and he was on fine form. Eric Bennett's been around for a long, long, long time. Never won a world title, though. So it's time to settle our last world title here in the World Archery Para Championships. And it's Suresh Salvatambi of Malaysia to get us underway. Hey. I said Eric Bennett has never won a world title. That was completely untrue. He was winner in 2015 in Donau Eschingen in Germany. Turn. Well, what a cracking start. Turn. Excuse me, that was a nine. The side worked well for Salvatambi. We got a close up of uh, Bennett's draw there using his mouth and his teeth. Turn. And this is superb shooting.
nine. So a seven to take the first set points for the American. He's not aiming for the seven, he's aiming for the middle. Bit of a longer seven hold, and, and it looks like it is a seven. That's what he needed, and he's taken the first set points here in this gold medal seven. match. The first two shots that Eric Bennett let go, um, they were perfect. The clicker went, the timing went, uh, and, then, and then the arrow flew. That last one, there was a little bit of a delay between his clicker going and then uh, the arrow flying. Well, he started so well with uh, two tens. Let's get a close up of this beautiful draw. see both of those tens executed perfectly in the very very center ring yeah the rhythm was right the rhythm was perfect um, clicker control is all about understanding when your shot's going to go and, and executing exactly the right time on the C of the click that last shot there was just this this moment of hesitation and it is much more difficult for him because he's not releasing with his fingers he's not releasing with the expansion of his body he's releasing with his mouth I mean, it's quite astonishing yeah, I spoke to him after he took uh, gold in uh, the team match earlier on today, and he says that uh, if he stops on his draw, sometimes the clicker can jam on the arrow. So the second set of this gold medal match, and Suresh Salvatambi is already two set points down, and he'll shoot first. Eight. Nine. Eric Bennett's draw weight over 40 pounds and he's holding all that pressure on his back teeth. Nine. See, he uh, loads up the bow with his uh, left hand in between Nine. shots as Selva Thambi finishes with a 26. Another big opportunity for the American. Seven. And yet again, that, that last shot just doesn't seem to have the rhythm of the others. So that means... It's almost like there's a, there's a delay in between knowing he should shoot and shooting. Well, it resulted in uh, level scores in uh, that set. So they share the set points as Eric Bennett looks on pensively. And it's all about rhythm and process and uh, repeating the same pattern of movements over and over again with absolute perfection in the, in terms of the repetition. Now what's fantastic is Eric Bennett has learned a couple of processes. He's been around for a really, really long time and over that time the rules have changed and whereas previously you were allowed to use a release aid with the recurve bow back in the, back in the old days of pirate archery, now you're not. You're only allowed to use a release aid, a mechanical release aid in the compound division. So he's He's learned to use this mouth tab, he's learned a new process, and he's still you know, one of the best in the world. Well, still trailing, Suresh Salvatambi of Malaysia will shoot first in the third set in this gold medal match. Nine. Just dropping into the eight there. Mini opportunity for Selva Tambi. Nine. 
moment, he looks like he's capitalising on it. Chris, the shoulder must be very tense in this draw. I've never tried to draw a bow like that before, but I wouldn't want to. I mean, when you've got two arms and you're drawing with your hands and your fingers, it's all about putting the pressure on the on the shoulder blades and transferring it to the torso. But Eric here Hi. has to put all of the pressure through the muscles and through the through the biceps and the triceps, and that's not the the most solid part of your your body when you're shooting bow and arrow. It's uh, it's it's very impressive. It certainly is, but uh, this one's out of reach. He'll want a good final arrow, though. Oh. All in a line, and that's a and nine. We're the best scoring arrow for Bennett, but the points go to Suresh Thelva, Salma Thambi, and uh, the Malaysian has drawn level on points and is right back in this gold medal match. The 25 year old Malaysian looking very happy, and uh, he has a lot of support in the crowd as well. <laughs> Just recognize that they're on the big screen here at this amazing venue. And if anything, the momentum is now with the Malaysian. With the scores level, Selva Thambi will shoot first, as he did in the first set. Seven. Eight nine liner. Eight. A lot of our arrows landing to the left, shaking his head. He obviously knows what's going on. Well, Ten. second arrow will go to a measure, but that 10 is his best shot so far. Eric Bennett needs a good arrow here, not just for his own confidence, but because of that measure, nine. gets a nine. So that draws him level on points in this set, but only oh. provisionally as we're going to go to a measure for the second arrow from Suresh Selva Thambi. Feeling on uh, whether this one is going to get marked up. It looks out to me. But the Malaysian agent just waved his hand. Almost as if it was positive news at the target. Well, it is positive news at the target. The eight has been marked up to a nine, and Suresh Delva Thambi has taken the two set points in this fourth set to take the lead, and this is the shot. Look how close that is. No wonder it went to a measure. 70 meters down the range, but this is still a sport of millimeters. Well, Bennett behind for the first time in the match will kick things off in the fifth set here. Turn! And he's found the middle. Turn! And so has Selva Thambi. This one has been bubbling away. And 
now it's really on the boil. No. Is this an opportunity for the Malaysian archer? Suresh just needs to match Eric's scores. Turn! Well, he's done one better than that. He's on for a perfect 30 here. Eight. And an eight has opened the door in a big way. A seven will level them up on points and take Selva Thambi to the title. Nine. He scores a nine and Suresh Selva Thambi becomes the immense individual world champion of 2019. And look at the delight on his face. Fantastic shooting. Wait until the last set to shoot any tens at all. we finished with a 29. It's all about finishing strong under the set system in Rika competition. A very sporting handshake from Eric Bennett. But the world champion is Malaysia's 25 year old Suresh Selva Thambi. Well, saluting, uh, I think, his fans in the crowd, but everyone has got up on their feet, including the Americans, to give Suresh Selva Thambi a big, warm round of applause and congratulations. He is the 2019 world champion. Well, he said coming out at the end nice and strong is the way forward. Well, two tens at the start of the fifth set for Selva Thambi. And he needed a seven to win and gets a nine, a 29 out of 30 to take the world title here in Den Bosch. What a smile as well to go with it. A gold medal winning smile. For Suresh, Salva Thambi. Well, it's been a superb tournament. He's been a superb championships here in Den Bosch. Here are the final rankings. Confirmation that Suresh Salva Thambi is the world champion of 2019. Eric Bennett have to settle for the silver medal and it's Barto Seydendor Ziev of Russia who's our bronze medalist. Chris, a brilliant tournament. Uh, yeah, fantastic performances from all the gold medalists. Uh, a couple of really, really strong teams here. Russia, China particularly, uh, Italy as well. Well, there we have it. That's the last of the action. I wonder if that young man has been inspired by what he's seen here. Uh, a lot of them in the crowd getting involved with the music, waving their hands along with the uh, mascot. And here's our session results. Wu Chun Yan takes the women's open individual gold and Suresh Selva Thambi of Malaysia taking the men's open individual gold medal. So Archie smiling as always Chris um, it's been a great pleasure to have your expert uh, commentary here in the box. Anything in particular stand out about the tournament as a whole here because for me it's been absolutely superb. Well I think the, the fantastic thing about the, the World Power Championships is, is just the level of ability of some of these para athletes and it, it, it's inspirational not just in the way they shoot in the way they carry themselves around the whole venue. Um, the, the friendliness, the, the, the camaraderie and the respect between the athletes is, is always inspiring and it's, I, I always forget in between these events how much I enjoy them and how much I enjoy watching these athletes compete. 
Yeah, they've been absolutely superb here, and uh, the crowd have been entertained by some absolutely world-class archery. And, of course, you still get that same level of tension uh, as uh, teams go up against teams and individuals go up against individuals. Yeah, and, and, and different kinds of impairments. Co compete together, shoot together. It's a real level playing field in archery. It's a, it's a sport that's accessible to everyone. And, and all of these athletes wouldn't consider themselves any different from anybody else shooting a bow and arrow. And that's really powerful. Really powerful indeed. Well, we've got one more medal ceremony to go here in Den Bosch. Let's welcome the athletes out back on to the field of play. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve of men open. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, hier is de medaille ceremony voor de categorie recurve heren open. Medals will be presented by World Archery Board member. The medailles zullen worden overhandigd door World Archery bestuurslid Greg Easton. The gifts will be presented by the King's Commissioner. The cadeaus zullen worden overhandigd door Commissaris van de Koning Wim van der Donk. Medal representing the Russian Federation. Bronze medaille. Well, he's had a great tournament. And he's the men's individual bronze medalist, 25 year old Barto Zaydendor Ziev of Russia. Collects his medal, awarded by World Archery Board member Greg Easton. And the gifts being presented by the King's Commissioner, Vim. Van der Dog. Silver medal representing the United States of America. Silver medal. A brilliant character on the scene. And a very unusual way to draw his bow with his teeth, but highly efficient and highly effective. It was enough for the silver medal at this year's World Championships. It's the 45-year-old American, Eric Bennett. He saved the best for last. A 25-year-old Malaysian was absolutely superb in taking the world title. It's Suresh Selvathambi who's on top of the podium here in the Netherlands. He is the 2019 world champion. Emotional. I'm not sure he expected this result. That smile is beaming, and it's time for the Malaysian anthem.
Die is een warm round of applause voor onze athletes. Dames en heren, zet nog een borst nog één keer een groot applaus voor onze top drie atleten. Well, there we have it. Our medalists confirmed, and it's Suresh Selvatambi, who is the recurve men's open individual world champion of 2019. And of course, Archie the mascot getting in for the photo op. Chris, brilliant performance from the Malaysian in the end. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Eric Brennan's a super experienced uh, para archer, but, but, but Suresh was the one that came through that really found his groove, really found the consistency and, and finished off the match in the right way to win a World Championships. Well, that's it from the World Archery Para Championships of 2019 here in this wonderful city of Den Bosch in the Netherlands. It's been a superb championships, but it's not over here in the Netherlands. Next weekend, we will have the world championships here in this very same venue, as you can see on the 15th and 16th of June. And that's something to look forward to, isn't it, Chris? Absolutely. Qualification starts tomorrow in Setogenbosch for the, the able-bodied world championships, which also acts as the primary qualification event for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. It's going to be a very exciting week. Well, in fact, they're right there and doing official practice today uh, down on the range ahead of qualification. But it's been brilliant here for the 2019 World Archery Para Championships. Thank you to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Karen. The uh, crowd has been delighted and we hope you have too. Thanks so much for joining us here in the Netherlands for these World Championships and do come back next week when there's more action to come from Den Bosch.